morning. Hi, good hey. morning, Christine. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for coming to Deer Creek. Oh, I'm so excited to see what you guys are up to. Well, you know, as the district is talking about equitable access for learning for all, we've been working with the Universal Design for Learning, so we can go and see if our students have choices and how they learn things. All right, let's go. Think about what choice and target you want to focus on and use the word bank to guide your learning. When we think about voice and choice, we think about what barriers do students have. And so maybe you might have a student who likes to write a book, but maybe you have students who aren't a fan of that but like to show their learning through drawings and so that gives them an opportunity to uh, express themselves and to make sure that they can match our target which is applying our message or the message of the book to their lives and then using those choices to make sure that it works. Well I really like that you guys are drawing something about how to be good friends and that you're 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 relating your experience to the book right and that not everything's for us and it's much more fun when we share isn't it? Yeah. 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 So we have to put it into our life um, and learn from other books. At the board level we talk a lot about you know voice and choice and, and mm -hmm. making sure that each individual learner exactly. gets to get to gets to prove their learning Yes. And prove mastery, yes. right? We we know, we know that that's an important skill, and like yes. you said, it matches what what we're trying to teach. Yes. I love that um, that that the kiddos, you know, are, are not only working with each other, yes. but recognizing how they learn and how they learn how, how they're able to prove to you best yes. that they understand. And it's, and it's nice to hear uh, to think about this because when we think about our target, it's not just a one-way street, right? As if you think of our, our continuum arrow, for example, for Leander ISD, we all have one arrow and then we all have smaller arrows that still point to that main goal. Right. And so that's a super important thing that for not just us, but as teachers, we have to think about. I love that. UDL is Universal Design for Learning and it's rooted in the principle that every learner is different and learns differently. So uh, we work as a team to remove barriers so everyone has access to work towards grade level or be beyond. Okay. It's, it's a challenge because we have so many different learners. We have to create about 30 different proactive rooms within each classroom. Tell me what you know about parallel lines. Parallel lines never cross. And how do you know that they never cross? Because parallel has two L's and those two L's never cross. So I love that because at the board level, you know, we talk a lot about deeper learning and what deeper learning looks like. And we talked about just last night, we talked about unleashing their potential. What I'm seeing in, on your screen is you've got um, a real world example of an obtuse angle, yeah. um, a definition of it, right? So you're sort of like, what does it mean? And then a picture and a non-example. What's a non-example? Like, not real. Not not an obtuse yeah, angle, right? Yeah. Okay. Tell me what you know about an obtuse angle. It's um, greater than 90 degrees and Good. less than 180. Nice job. When we talk about deeper learning, we know that we need to have equitable access. So we partner with our kids to figure out, hey, what choices do you have and how do you make choices? How do you reflect? So these posters, this is interesting for me. So uh, what does UDO mean for you? giving choices of learning different ways, freedom of choice, um, giving us options to help us learn. Uh, it means people's choice. So, you know, it, it's, it's scary to create these pathways and let students make mistakes and make choice, but ultimately they're going to be more invested and more successful when they have those pathways. And I really feel like that really ties into our graduate profile and what we're looking for is a, as they progress as learners that they're taking ownership of their learning. So we're heading into performing arts. Yeah. Tell me what we're going to do. Uh, I, I, we're going to enjoy ourselves. Okay. Um, I think it's ukulele. And when we talk about choice, I know Ms. Stokes has talked to them about different ways to do chords, two finger, one finger. I don't know, but Love we'll it. go in and see what happens. And we'll leave it to the professionals. There we go. Fantastic. Ready position? Yes. Catch them all. Beautiful. Rest position. So understanding that performing arts isn't isn't a fluff subject, it's very important for them to be able to learn those notes, learn those chords, understanding what they sound like at this level translates to our high schools doing as well as they do. Seeing that today really makes my heart happy that music is alive um, and that it, it is continuing at such a high level. Ms. Stokes really helps us with math too. Oh, as absolutely. they're having the reading and suddenly fractions and everything aren't complicated, they're fun. Well, thank you so much for sharing your
your school with me today. I had a really great time. Great. You're welcome anytime. Our teachers work hard, our kids work hard, and you know, go Colts! Go Colts!